What's going on guys? Welcome back to Mods and More. Today is a big day. We are finally starting another build and this one is going to be way bigger than the last one. So, here's the deal. What was going to be build 2 was a very large four-wheel drive, street bike powered, like insane buggy build. Um, now, we're still going to be doing that project and probably in a matter of just weeks here. But I wanted to find something else to build in between just because I have to source a ton of stuff to build this four-wheel drive buggy. Um, we got diffs, transmissions, parts for the engine, a ton of custom turn pieces, CV axles, hubs, like a ton of stuff that I got to have for this thing, let alone the wheels and tires. This thing's going to sit on massive 32-inch stickies. It's going to be a beast. Um, so I didn't want to not have any good content for you guys until I got all that stuff in. So I figure we'll start another buggy. So I started snooping around the shop and, uh, you know, I got a ton of stuff around here and, uh, I started snooping around and I couldn't believe it. I found like everything we would need to build another one of these. Um, I even had a bunch of tubing kicking around, uh, that had just been kind of piling up and, uh, some of the stuff came from that green buggy that I posted on Instagram. That was one that we were going to build, but then I started looking into it. That frame was really rough. It was like super hobbled together. I had been working on that thing since I was like a young teenager. And it's just been, you know, time after time after time of cutting and welding on it. There's a ton of pieces patched into it. And I decided, you know what, let me pull the main components from that thing put them on the shelf up top in the attic and uh, we'll build something else at some point with it. So that green buggy is going to kind of be replaced with this two wheel drive buggy that I'm talking about now. Um, so let's go take a look around, see what we can pile up here for parts and then we'll lay everything out and uh, see what we can make here. huge now obviously the rear wheels would be in way more once they're connected to the rear end it doesn't even fit in the frame now the distance between the rear end and the back of the seat is kind of predetermined because we have our drive shaft um, our rear end and our connection at the engine and that just kind of is what it is that drive shaft can't get any shorter if anything it should be longer um, so that's kind of our distance there. The front, I might be able to get the front wheels in a little bit more. Um, I don't know. Right now, my feet end like right here. And that's kind of where like your A-arms and stuff would start. So I don't know. It's not a bad size. It's right now it's got a wheelbase of eight feet. And it's about five and a half feet, a little more than five and a half feet wide. So, it's a little bigger than I would have liked, but I mean, going with that rear end, I don't think there's really much we can do. Unless we wanted to cut that thing up and shorten it. But again, once the wheels are mounted, I don't think it's going to seem as crazy. Seems super wide right now. But I think the, the tires look like a good balance between front and rear. The fronts will be a little easier to turn since they're skinnier. I did find this rack. That seems to work nice and smooth. We got the shocks laid out. Those aren't the best shocks, but we'll make them work. This one's got to be kind of low budget. 
low budget buggy build using the stuff that we already have because if I have to buy a bunch of stuff we're going to be in trouble because I already have to buy a bunch of stuff for the other build and that's already a struggle so we got to build it with the things that we have now this engine I know for a fact runs no problem um, and I actually have uh, parts for this engine to freshen it up um, I have like new electronics and things like that um, filters the whole nine uh, to get that thing freshened up so it's, it does have that little oil leak um, but that's not the end of the world we could figure that out later right now it's sitting in a cradle I don't know if we need that probably don't um, but the engines essentially mounted for us already so maybe we do utilize it in some way um all right i guess let's do it i don't know it, it feels so crazy look at that engine oh my goodness it feels so crazy to get off of this this new project and start something else but as long as it rolls there's no reason why we can't work on this while we're waiting for parts and then roll it out of the way when it's time to work on the big buggy looking at it in here the big buggy is going to be at least as long probably longer probably another foot longer and similar similarly wide so it's kind of what it's going to look like when it's in here except the wheels are way bigger all right well i'm going to sketch up a frame and we'll start bending some tube and well, i don't see what happens here looking around in the attic again and yesterday I found pieces of, of a arms that I had made a while back and I have three more of those which could potentially work for the front a arms they need heim joints in them and stuff but that's not a problem and then I dug out some spindles these are like custom spindles that were built from quad spindles that have front drum brakes on them I think we could possibly make those work and then over here I found the section of frame that used to be attached to that cradle you can see that flat piece that bolts on you have the same thing on the back side of this so I was wondering I'm like man I wonder if we could take that piece of frame mount it to the rear of our new frame which would give us our pivot points for the forelink and allow our cradle to bolt up to our new section of frame um, it would only give us one connection point you know but that's a start I'm thinking if we can somehow bolt that frame to this frame set the angle because that's basically the firewall where the seat would be sitting we set that angle correctly that would give us a huge head start on getting the four link mounted 
And then if we can utilize these control arms, that gives us a huge, uh, a huge advantage on the front end too, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I guess I gotta take some measurements and see, you know, are those control arms long enough? Because we don't want the front wheels sticking in like way further than the rear wheels. But I don't know. Could be an option. So let's play with it. I'm thinking what we do is cut the tails off of the the bottom of this here. Get those cut off. Literally rest that lower tube on top of this tube. Seam weld them down the, you know, just tack it in a few places for now, but eventually it could put a nice heavy weld across there, which would stop that from moving at all. Um, and then try to find a way to temporarily mount the engine back there and then see what kind of distance we have to the rear end and hope for the best. I don't know. I say we give it a shot. That will definitely speed things up. And it's a budget build. It'll help, you know, it's less stuff we have to to buy and put together, so. And it'll clean up all these random parts I have kicking around this place. And I still got some more new goodies that we can throw on this thing, too, um, once the main frame portion is all done. So, I don't know. Let's give it a shot, see if we can make it work, and uh, we'll go from there.
right, guys. It's actually coming together not too bad. Um, everything seems to kind of be mounting up decently. So the lower links worked perfectly with the with the length of that drive shaft, which makes sense because those were the lower links that went with that drive shaft on the original machine that all this was ripped apart from. Um, now, the upper links are going to be a little trickier, so I could have them come from the truss and run up into this quarter inch plate here, but I kind of wanted a little bit more link separation in that. Um, and more importantly, a little bit more angle on the link. So the further we come in here, the less of a triangulated link we end up with. Um, and because we don't have a ton of triangulation on the lowers, it's important that we get a, as much as possible out of the uppers. Um, so I think what we'll do is come in super tight, have like both links basically come to a point in the center, and then I grab these out of the scrap tube bin, and I'm thinking we just come off of the frame something like that, and then using some tabs, we can get that link connected somewhere out in this area here. Um, and then this piece sticking out will then utilize that to connect with that lower piece sticking out to form our roll cage coming up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure point to point on the lowers and then measure point to point on the uppers before they're installed. Make sure those are the same distance apart and then weld in those posts, we'll weld those on, and then technically the forelink in the rear is mounted. Um, it's not supported at all, because we're only tacked, you know, attaching the whole assembly to the frame. Um, so we'll have to add some more welds back there, and then obviously build out a bunch more frame to support everything. But at least we'll have a functioning forelink at that point. And then, I don't know, we'll either jump on frame after that, or maybe mess around with those A-arms in the front and see if we can get this thing kind of like in, the, in a roller status. piece of frame thought maybe I'd get lucky and it would work but all right now that we got that part done I think what I want to do now is jump back to the front and 
get some of these control arms mounted so we can see what we look like as far as that's concerned. thing is massive I mean that's not bad though the front wheels pretty much line up nicely with the rears if anything they might I don't know, on camera it looks like they stick in a hair but in person it looks like they might stick out a hair because the offsets are so different than what they were built for. But either way, that's close enough. All right, guys, I'm about out of time for this today. So that's going to wrap it up for episode one. Um, in the next episode, we're going to start building out the rest of the roll cage. We now have our wheelbase set. Our rear end is in place. Our front lower A arms are in place. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad to come in on the next video and, and start to form the rest of this roll cage and kind of shape this thing. Now we are freestyling here, so we'll see how it you know it comes out. We might have to mess with a couple things or cut and redo a couple things, but I kind of just want to freestyle on this one and see you know how it turns out. So, but I appreciate you guys watching. If you liked the video, drop a like. Consider subscribing. I'll catch you guys on the next one.